Yo, peace and blessings, my people. Peace and blessings. It's your brother Samuel. I'm back, man, with another video. Today, we're going to be reacting to Chris Williamson and his thoughts with Derek's More Plates, More Dates on no fap and no corn. You know, this topic's going to be really interesting, man. Ignore my voice. I've got a bit of a cold, you know, so if you hear me sniffling and all that kind of nonsense, then, you know, ignore it. Bear with me. But I thought this would be a really interesting video, man, because, you know, of course, my thoughts straight off the gate is that, you know, as a man, if you're not married, you need to be on you need to be celibate you know what i'm saying there's no ifs or buts really if you're not under a covenant of the most high and not not engaged in marriage with another person then you have no reason to be releasing your life force you have no reason to be having sex with who and anybody you know not realizing that you're paying with your soul in any of these activities man whether it's masturbation fornication like you are literally paying with your soul you know what i'm saying there's no there's no hiding it there's no getting away from it so yeah, man, let's let's talk about it. I think these guys they they provide like in, interesting points where you know they're both. I like this guy's content. You know, he does content with David Goggins, with Jordan Peterson, um, and obviously they're very intelligent individuals. They're very productive individuals. Um, so I'm not here to bash them. I'm not here to hate on them. But what I find interesting is when these topics on these big platforms go viral. You know, for example, this this topic here has got you know 1.4 million views. It's like they they never come at it from a spiritual vantage point, and this is what's crucial, man. And this is why a lot of guys fail. This is why a lot of guys cannot keep up this lifestyle. And I'm not here to act like no saint. All men fall short of the glory of God, and I've fell on this journey numerous times. But what I've learned through the grace of God, and and going through this journey, is the ability to pick yourself back up. You know, even when you fall, and 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 learning from that habit, and not just. You know, not just accepting it and being complacent and just saying, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just run to these things. Like actually having some spiritual fortitude and conquering these things. But the trouble is, if you don't come at it from a biblical standpoint, you will always fall back into your old nature. You know, I don't care how, how spiritual you are, how much meditation you do, how much breathing work, how much voodoo, voodoo, all this nonsense. Like, if you're not submitted to the Most High God, you will fall back into temptation. You know, and I'm not saying that's not going to happen even under a biblical standpoint, but what I will say is, through the grace of God, it is possible. And this is where, you know, just coming at it from a science perspective is not always the best. You know, you can throw up studies and studies and studies, but it doesn't always it doesn't always give you the proof. And this is why a lot of times I don't trust a lot of these, you know, not, not this guy specifically, but a lot of big platforms when they talk about these things, because it's like, you can have all the studies in the world, but it doesn't necessarily mean you know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't mean you have real anecdotal evidence which is in my opinion sometimes more beneficial i know i know i know i know plenty of people who have clearly went you know more than 365 days without releasing their seed and it's like it's, it's evident that, that they're in perfectly good health you know what i'm saying they're good mentally physically and spiritually so a lot of these a lot of these platforms even like you know these conglomerates these companies you know at the end of the day they have an agenda they have they have a message to sell they have products to sell um you know, not to get too off topic, but like, you know, these things are real, man. And, and, and you know, if, if I just Google now, like how often, see, like straight out the gate, like first website, if you masturbate many times a day and have a healthy, satisfying life, good for you. Like it's just, just have a quick, quick Google search. I can see that like, not everyone out there is out there to give you the best information. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's at the end of the day, when you're doing these things, you're paying with your soul. You know, so these people can tell you it's good for you. These people can tell you all these lies. But in the, the day, what does the Most High say? You know, you know what I mean. Like, what, what, what fruits do you get from these activities? Absolutely nilch, man. Zero. So, you know, let's talk about it. I pretty like these guys. I watched this video already. You know, they provide some good talking points. But I just wanted to chop in and and, and inter intercede at some points where I just disagree. Like, and I have to bring out the Word of God because, like I say, if you're just looking at this from you know, a, a narrow point of view of, oh, it, it, what does the science say? If the science says this, then it must be true. That's not always the case, especially if you're a man of faith. You will know that that's not always the case. You know what I mean? Like, I've just showed you from that Google search, and if you really believe that doing that multiple times a day is going to be good for you in any sort of way, you must be tapped. <laughs> like, you must be crazy. Okay, so <laughs> let's get into it, man. That's what she's talking about, bro, science. What are your thoughts on NoFap? Um, I think that it is... It depends what you are doing it for. Are you doing it because you've been told by, I don't know, some like incel forum that this is like what you got to do? Or are you doing it for a dopamine detox thing? Are you doing it like in what context? Just in general, what do I think about it? Yeah. And I, what are the contexts in which you think it's got some efficacy and which are the ones that you I've think got this sped up a little bit? Just I think so there are a lot of people who are sedentary, 
hermits that basically never leave their house and use outlets like pornography to achieve that dopamine hit that is otherwise a lower barrier to entry way of achieving that smashing the dopamine button. It's a lot higher effort to go find a woman, you know, go on a date with her, uh, you know, attract her, get her into your bed, you know, have sexual intercourse and actually put energy expenditure into that activity as well. It's very easy to sit at your computer that you're already at, open up the browser and uh, smash the dopamine button. So a lot of people just, it's almost like a weirdly paralleled version of those rat studies where they just wired their brains and then give them the opportunity to now obviously what he's just said is facts like a lot of the reason why a lot of us have, you know in the past have ran to these things is because it is just a quick dopamine fix it's just quick pleasure you know and it, and it and it saves doing the real work it saves putting in the real hard work which is building your character as a man which is developing skills social skills you know developing good habits that ultimately will yield good fruit or just literally have like he said the dopamine smasher where you just press it and boom that's it like <laughs> job done like <laughs> do you know what i mean like so i completely agree man i completely, completely agree with that so uh, smash this this dopamine button essentially and they always choose to smash it over and over again is they very much will take the easy route and you know it still achieves the same dopamine hit to them so for them it's there there's wired to be you know, for them, I think no fat could be useful because at some point your biological urges will be like, get the fuck out there and have sex. Because you're motivated so much just by frustration. Yeah, so that's absolutely facts. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's always going to be beneficial whether you're, you know, spiritual or not. Whether you believe in the most high or not, it's always gonna, obviously going to be beneficial, you know, because it's going to drive certain urges through your body and you're going to have to overcome them urges um, and have to channel it into other things. What I do find important in what he said is that you know about not having the willpower not having the drive this is where you have to lean on god because with leaning on god he's the only body he's the only one sorry that will get you through he's the only one i don't care how spiritual you think you are i don't care how much meditation you do how much breathing work if you're not relying on god for the strength to, to overcome sexual temptation you will always fall back and i'm not saying you're not going to fall back even even with the most high but the difference is he will mold and shape you to keep over overcoming that and getting better you know it says in the um it says in the book of proverbs that a righteous man falls seven times and he gets back up again you know so just quick thoughts on that yeah like the apathy and the complacency that you have after busting a nut it's just like you just don't really care about anything you know like why like why am i gonna go find a woman to be with when i'm satisfied and i just feel fine you know i'm just chilling here I don't need to do that. So that's where it would be useful. Where's yeah. Where's it, where's it not useful? I think it's useful in individuals who it has actually had a detriment to their quality of life from a relationship standpoint, uh, social interaction standpoint. Some people end up hindering their relationship quality with their girlfriend too because they're so porn addicted. They end up, you know, over masturbating and then exposing themselves to stimuli that otherwise makes them relatively unresponsive in an actual real life setting with a woman. Like there are many scenarios in which I think no fap or more specifically no porn potentially could yeah, this is facts as well, because even if you're even if you're a married man, realistically, if you're still watching corn and you've got a big problem, you know what I'm saying? Like you're clearly not satisfied in, in, your, in your sex life or it's messing with your brain and obviously it's going to mess how you perceive your woman and how you can ultimately serve each other and serve God in that relationship. So obviously, if you're married, you know, you need to really snap that. Out. You know, you really need to cut it out because that's that's crazy. <laughs> coupled with some degree of no fap but it happens man it happens a lot get conflated a lot is the no fap no porn thing like a lot of people just say no fap but in reality a lot of it is problematic with the compounding effect of the pornography exposure because if you're just if you're just like thinking about your girlfriend you bust a nut because you haven't seen her in you know a while i don't think that's bad necessarily what else are you gonna do you know so it's the pornography and like tying that that see right there like this is where this is where i have to cut it off like he just said that if you haven't seen your girlfriend in a while, it's okay to bust a nut. <laughs> now listen, listen, it's not okay. Okay, <laughs> it's not okay. Like, it's not okay. You that means you're going to have to play with yourself. And when I sit and think about it, like, I don't know how. Like, it's a shame, man, that we we, we ever got conditioned into this way of thinking and thinking this was okay. You know what I mean? This is why it's good to have like you know good good masculine figures growing up and and and, and people that are gonna put you on this game because it's like. You should never, when God never intended us to play with ourselves. God never intended us to, to just be out here just releasing a, a life force, a, a procreation substance. You know what I'm saying? Just wasting it for the sake of because you feel a certain way, because your emotions are in a certain place. You know, this is where self-control, which he talks about in the Bible over and over again, is so heavily emphasized because a man must be able to control his vessel. 
you know what I mean? A man must be able to be in control at all times. This is what it means to be a man. We, we must be stoic. You know, some days you're going to wake up and you're going to feel like shit. Some days you're going to wake up and, you, and, and you, you're going to just be depressed. It is what it is. There's no hiding from it. There's no getting away from it. You know, if you're not running to that quick dopamine, which is, you know, in a sense of, of corn, um, and masturbation you're going to have to face yourself you're going to have to really look at yourself in the mirror and say what don't i like about my life and this frustration is going to force you to elevate and grow you know what i mean and he's saying like oh when your girlfriend's away what about these men that was in wars bro life is on the line do you know what i'm saying that if they don't get the mission done their whole country could be taken over you know what i'm saying real warriors you think they was in the trenches busting nuts bro <laughs> do you know what i mean you think there was in the trenches worried about oh like you know they'd probably be away from their wife for six months at a time all they had was dudes around them and you think they was there just thinking about oh how can i get this nut off real quick i'm not saying no one that some didn't but what i am saying is like true warriors the people who conquered like we're talking about like people who had major empires like the, the roman empires the roman soldiers and stuff like that you think you think they was out here busting nuts every five every five minutes because they felt a certain type of way you know what I'm saying? When we talk about the greatest boxers of all time, when we talk about, you know, the Muhammad Ali's, the Mike Tyson's, when we talk about, um, you know, all, the, all these great athletes and stuff like that, they don't have time for these useless activities, these things that are going to make them lose strength. You know what I'm saying? So if you're saying, oh, because your woman's away from you, that now you need to bust a nut. No, that means you need to focus. That means you need to take that time to find productive things to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that temptation is not going to come. It will. The devil will try to tempt you. But at the end of the day, you need to stand strong in your foundations. And this is why you need strong spiritual foundations in place that are going to keep you within that, within them, within them boundaries where you say to yourself, listen, no matter what temptation comes against me, I will fight it. You know, a, a, a scripture that I love is Proverbs 30. See, now I'm fired up because it's just like stuff like when I have to intercede on that. Proverbs 31.3. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy way which destroyeth kings. You know what I'm saying? So if, if it's that if it's that simple for you to just to just give up and just say, Oh, just give into the lust that easy, like it says destroy of kings, like it's not good for a man to be a pathetic version of himself you know and like i say we all stumble and fall i'm not if you stumble you just have to get back up again but at least you're on the journey at least you're trying you know what i'm saying but like to just say that oh because my woman wasn't with me i'm just gonna give up and i'm just gonna release my nut because i feel a little bit a little bit oh a little bit lonely or a little bit frustrated like it's pathetic it really is the dopamine hit to that activity that is overly problematic and then the no fap if it gets if it's excessive fapping or it's hindering your drive to go do things in life pathological that, fapping yeah yeah like at that point when you can actually sit down and objectively look at yourself and say this is impeding my ability to either get high quality relationships maintain them in some capacity or it's not leading to what i feel to be a high quality of life in general like at that point i think no fap is absolutely worth trying i think there's definitely a, a lower ceiling it's not worth trying every man must be retaining their life force energy if they're not married if they're not looking to produce children if they're not you know in the confines of a marriage and this is why society is so messed up you know and this is why you get a lot of these red pill content creators who talk about oh you know manipulating women and oh you've got to be this kind of man you've got to do it this way you've got to you've got to like you know have all the power and and all these kind of crazy nonsense talking points like it's all it's all so worldly and it, and the reason they talk about these things is because there's so many men that are just lost and caught up in lust and caught in, instead of caught up in purpose and caught up, caught up in chasing what God wants, they're caught up in chasing what they want and then their feelings and they're becoming so emotional and and, and, and this is the and, and this is the reason why, you know, women go their own way and, and, and it's just the whole relationship dynamic is messed up, man. This is wicked and evil, it's from the devil, like you know, because men ultimately, it's it's that it's down to the man. At the end of the day, you know, aside from the Most High, men built this world. You know what I'm saying? Men are the one who have to make decisions. Men are the one who are supposed to be logical and critical thinkers. So when you take that man and you make him weak, yeah, when you make that man weak and pathetic, ultimately the people around him, the society crumbles. And this is why today we've got so many problems, man. This is why sin just rules everywhere because men are too afraid to stand up and say what they really truly feel and think. You know, you got all these politicians and that half of them are probably, I mean, they're all weird lizards anyway, but half of them are probably, you know, watching pornography and stuff like that, but they're in high positions of power. 
it's crazy, man. It really is crazy. Like what, what, you know, ruining the the the, the true natural character of a man can do to society. So it's just interesting. There's no option whether you should be or shouldn't be. Every man should be doing this, and and if if, if every man was doing this, the world would be a better place. It truly would. Everyone would be waiting for their woman. Everyone would be waiting for their wife. There'll be no adultery. You know, I'm, I'm not saying it'd never happen because men men are fallen in nature. You know, in general, but it it would be a far lot less. It'd be a lot better society, hundred percent. For where it's justified to do no porn versus I think no fap. Like, not I don't necessarily think no fap needs to even be in the same conversation as no porn always which mm -hmm. it often is people I, just assume it to be mean. one in the same yeah it's got a branding no porn's got a branding problem because it's not as catchy yeah no fap's quite catchy and i don't think even with porn i don't think it has zero place like i think there are some scenarios in which you know it'd be great maybe it excites your sex life who knows it's just a matter of like the exposure like <laughs> come on man come on like you know i'm sure this guy's a good guy man i've watched his content before but to say that no, no, no marriage should ever need porn. Do you know what I'm saying? Let's be real. Let's be real. Like, no, it, it, it's, it's an abomination before God. It really is. Like, if your marriage, to spice up that marriage, you need to sit there and watch other people have sex or do sexual activity. Like, you guys need to refrain. You guys need to get, you, need, you guys need to really discover the root of the issue because it's not going to be solved by watching this, 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 this disgusting, like, content. You know what I'm saying? So, that's just silly. I don't even need to break that down any much any further, but that's that's stupid. I'm gonna be honest. Like too much or too little, too much of something is always bad in general. So as you would expect, at some point you are crossing a threshold into impeding your quality of life in some capacity. I've read about risks online of going too long without coming for men. Mm -hmm. Any truth to that at all? It's, uh, there was this one study I dug into. It was about ejaculation frequency, and there was a pretty clear trend whereby after a week. If you don't bust a nut, you will have a big spike in testosterone. And then thereafter, you end up having this plateau effect where it doesn't stay high. It kind of like dips back down and then plateaus at baseline. So I think there's some sort of biological like rhythm to trying to drive you to do something. And then it's almost like with, with fasting. If people fast the first few days, you're super hungry. You have these biological urges to go eat and get nutrients. And then your body sort of shifts into like a anti-catabolic, more like sustain, just preserve yourself, hibernation mode. And I think that very much applies to ejaculation and sexual activity too. Like if you go too long without it, your body goes into a state of like seemingly adjusting to no sexual activity to some extent. I am no longer a reproductive being. Yeah, like I am. Maybe I'm <clears throat> ancestrally, I am uh, out on a hunt or I'm lost somewhere or I'm at war mm. or something and I need to just not be too concerned about this. So with that, if that was the case and if this study was to be believed and there's probably other factors and blah, blah, but that would suggest that around about a weekly to uh, fortnightly cadence mm. of either having sex see they make it seem like there's a limit to this thing like there's no limit man listen god has created you perfectly god has created you exactly how you need to be you know a lot of this is not out there in mainstream you know it's hard to it's hard to find this information do you know what i'm saying this is where the internet is not always your friend you know you know what i mean it's, it's a lot of there's a lot of lies out there there's a lot of deception because for example you know the internet can tell you that like you know not releasing your 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 seed for a long time could could have like effects on on your um on your prostate you know it can cause cancer and you know it, it can it will affect your future sex life or it will affect your sex drive or your hormones and all this nonsense and these lies bro it's just lies like because at the end of the day to go to go a long time okay to not giving into sexual temptation it's going to require massive amounts of discipline it's going to require a lot of self introspection and understanding and you're going to have to acquire much wisdom it's going to take prayer it's going to take fasting it's going to take all these different things that require hard work in order to make it work you know so this is where and, and in doing that it's going to allow you to become a more a better man that's going to be able to achieve and and, and 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 tackle things in life and even not even just for success but just in your own integrity and and your own standing in the most high god where you where you stand with god it's gonna it's gonna allow you to be more fruitful you know what i'm saying uh, which is it's going to affect other people it's going to shine it's going to help your family it's going to help your children in, in the future there's so much fruit you're going to bear from 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 being self-controlled you know so to put sorry to put a number on it and say that you know, it's best for this amount of days and that amount of days. It's such lies. Like, 
the, the, the goal is indefinitely until you are married, if marriage is even your will. And this is the thing, like marriage might not even be in your will. It might not even be in God's will for your life. You know what I'm saying? Look at, look at St. Paul. St. Paul said in the book of Corinthians that I, I wish that all men stayed as I am. Now, clearly he's talking about because he was a celibate man. But he said, obviously, if you're burning with passion, then you should get married. You know, so it's not in everybody's life to 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 <coughs> to be married. Look at Jesus Christ. You know, the man died at 33 years old. He had no wife. The man was sinless. So that clearly tells us that he never felt a sexual temptation. You know, so that means he was celibate for 33 years. You know, and when we talk about saints and we talk about Christ and we talk about the prophets and, you know, there's a reason why they had this, this glow about them. There's a reason they had such spiritual insight and, and, and such such fortitude and, and, and connection with God because they, they kept their vessel sanctified and, 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 and only only gave in to those things when it made sense, like I say, under a marriage. When it's in a marriage, you know, sense, God has his grace over that. But if you're just releasing your life force, you know, at any at any given time when you feel like it like you, you you're going to you're going to lose parts of yourself you're going to lose minerals you're going to lose your essence you're going to lose drive and and, and you know and willpower so it's crazy man you know the, the the word said in first corinthians it says please sexual immorality every other sin a person commits is outside of the body but sexual immoral person sins against his own body you know so it's deep man it's deep or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Jeez, man. So clearly, like, you know, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, so to sit here and pull up studies and say, oh, this amount of time is going to be best. And then after that, do it, do it so you'll get a testosterone spike and all this nonsense. Like, it's false information. It's straight false information. Like God has made your body to perfectly function as it is. You know, if you're not having sex, that's like and you're not releasing that seed. It's only gonna do you better. It's, it's only gonna it's only gonna nourish you. You know, of course, the body knows how to reabsorb these minerals. It knows how to reabsorb your seed, which goes into you know. Think about it like this, right? Think about it like this. That seed produces a whole child from start to finish. You know, from a single cell. Okay, or a collection of cells to go to what I am now with eyes, eyebrows, a head, hair, think, like thoughts, a spirit and a soul. You know, so if you're not constantly releasing that, it's only going to be beneficial to your system. It's going to nourish your body like all over. It's going to allow you to be more, you know, have more drive. It's going to allow you to be stronger. You know, I've never felt on this journey at one point that, oh, I've got low testosterone because uh, I, didn't, I didn't release it day seven and... It's weird, bro, like, it's false information, you know, here again it says in the book of Matthew, it says, but there are Enochs who have been so from birth, and there are Enochs who have been made Enochs by men, and there are Enochs who have made themselves Enochs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. So an Enoch is someone who's basically celibate, you know, and he's saying that those who have made themselves Enochs, in other words, they've chosen a life of celibacy for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, you know, in order to grow closer to God, in, or, in order to... um to align themselves better with God's will and, and, and his purpose, you know, and, and these are Jesus' words, you know, so let the one who is able to receive this receive it, you know, anybody, anybody who thinks his lifestyle is weird, anybody who thinks it's, it's, it's strange, you know, he's, 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 he's a man who, who's driven by lust, he, he's not willing to admit his flaws, you know, and it's, this, is, this is what's perfect about this journey is because there's no hiding, like there really is no hiding from, from your true self when you, when you go celibate, like, you are forced to understand all your bad habits, all all mental bondages, anything that holds you back, you are forced to conquer it and you've got no place to run. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you need to transmute that energy. You need to change and be a better person. It's simple as, you know, you need to understand your triggers. Like, well, yeah, I went on a tangent there. Let me keep going. So fapping yeah. would actually be an advantage because I'm going to guess you only get this spike once. It's not like if you weren't to bust a nut again for the remainder of that month you're not going to get weekly spikes each time you get one and then it plateaus so you can re keep... repeat the cycle if you ejaculate that one weekend then you reset the clock every yep. time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's it, again like i don't necessarily this would be like a wild biohack to try and just recommend and i don't necessarily like make sure you only bust once a week I'm not saying that yeah it's just if you were somebody who was to actually follow like what happens biologically that seems to be in line with what happens and a lot of people on that do know fap they will also find that it's extremely difficult at the beginning and then after a while, it's like, oh, it's not that bad anymore. 
Yeah. Is that maybe something that you actually want to be adapted for? Yeah. Is that actually something that's yeah, so interesting? Yeah, and like, do you want to be in a state of, for example, perpetual fasting where you just don't desire nutrients? Like, maybe if you're a bear who's hibernating, like, I don't know, but... Yeah. Well, um, I was talking to Hamza, who is kind of my window into the younger guy's personal development world. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that there's a lot of guys that he knows who have attached their sense of self-worth to the number of days since they last fapped. Yeah, there's definitely something to be said about the feeling like you're working towards something. That's facts. You know, I know I know a lot of people like just seen online do do this where they do attach their self-worth to, you know, how long they've been able to abstain from sexual temptation and, and i've done this too you know what i'm saying and, and it's but at the end of the day you know this is where you need to see this journey is it's a, it's, it is a journey it is it is an indefinite thing you know it is something it's it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle and it's not something where you should be you know counting each day every single day every hour because then you're, you're giving power to it you're overthinking it like you really are instead of being submitted to god instead of really living out this lifestyle and thinking about how you can actually you know better your life and how you can grow in certain areas if you're just always focusing on oh how can i avoid how can i avoid porn how can i avoid masturbating you're always going to be you we give into what we fear the most you know what i'm saying let that sink in so it's like you can't just you can't you need to think of it in a more in-depth spiritual way than just to just to simply say just to, just to simply run from it you need to address the problem you know and this is where this is where the power, um, power of prayer comes in you know, so don't attach your self-worth to it. At the end of the day, we're all going to stumble and fall. You know what I'm saying? There'll be many times on this journey where you'll fall. Like, I'm not here to sit there and say that that won't happen. But if it does happen, just know that with, with, with Christ Jesus, there, wasn't, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And he understands that. And this is, this is the reason why he paid the penalty for our sins, man. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not one of them who says that we can sin, that grace may abound. You know, Paul says, God forbid. But... At the end of the day, he has extended that grace unto us. So if we do fall, we have a mediator. If we do fall, we're able to approach God without shame, without guilt. You know, so I just want to drop that in there, man. Like, don't let the devil lie to you. Like, when you fall, and 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 convince you that you're you're worthless, or, and and that you just you just it, it will make you go back into this domino effect where you fall back into into being a slave again to them desires. At the end of the day, you need to remember that when you've come to Christ, okay, when you embark on this journey. You have become a new creation. You don't associate yourself with your old self anymore. You know, so you got to keep pushing, man. But yeah, don't attach your self-worth to this. Attach your self-worth to the cross. Attach your self-worth to, you know, have your confidence in Jesus Christ always. And achieving something and have power over your, your urges. Like you have a control over your body because you definitely feel like after you break a no-fap streak, because you succumb to the urges, you feel like a piece of shit, even though it felt good for a second. Mm. Like, God damn it, I just, I just fucked up. And the people who are able to sustain it. And, and in a sense, like, I know I just said what I said, but kind of rightly so, like, you know, because at the end of the day, when we fall, it does come down to, it does expose areas where we could have been submitted to God more, we could have prayed more, we could have fasted more. No one can sit here and say that they fell and it was God's fault, <laughs> you know, God forbid. Like, it, it ultimately is our choice to, to give into that flesh. Let's, yes, we can say the devil's tempted us, but it's the devil can't force us to sin. Nobody can force us to sin. So rightly so, you will be convicted. The conviction will hit hard. You know, the difference is in condemnation and conviction is conviction is going to show you and expose the areas where you could have done better and, and how you can improve, whereas condemnation is going to tell you that you are, you are, you, you're worthless and, and now as a result of this, God doesn't, lo God doesn't love you anymore, which is obviously complete lies and it's from the devil. But obviously, rightly so, you need to embrace that conviction. Ask the Holy Spirit to, to help you, you know, do better in this area, how, how you could avoid it next time. And he will do, naturally, he will do. Like, you will, you will grow each and every single time if you do fall. And, you know, work past that. There's very much like a, an achievement of, oh, I've gone 27 days without fapping or busting a nut. I'm, you know, this is fantastic. I have, what, what's Jerry Seinfeld say? Or uh, George, it's like power over my domain or something. Or I control my domain. I, for, I forget what they said. But it's uh, definitely something to be said about the, uh, um, I don't know, restraining, definitely giving guys a sense of reward for an achievement of control of self, not giving in to urges. I think the same way you would not give in to, I don't know, craving sugar or something and you feel good about it. I think some guys do would expectedly tie their self-worth. Uh, you know, I 
don't need sex. I don't go, I can go this long without even mm. feeling like I need, and it, it could sometimes extend into a problematic thing where it's like, I don't even need a woman. Like fuck, yes. fuck the other gender. Like I don't, I don't even need to have a companion because I'm like that much of a lone wolf who doesn't need to fap. I don't need a woman. Mode for the rest of my life. Yeah. What's happening people? If you enjoy. Yeah. Don't fall into that, that side of things. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, as a man, you're naturally going to, you're naturally going to want a woman. You know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no pretending like, you know, women are a blessing. Um, but there's a, there's a time for it and, and, and this is where this journey is beautiful because it will give you the discernment to know who is the right woman that's going to fit your purpose and your model for life and what God wants you to do in this life and this woman is going to be come and be a perfect help mate but until it's necessary just, just keep focusing on God keep focusing on the mission just like Adam did you know in the garden and then Eve came along and she you know she came to come his help mate until then Adam was focused on God and God alone that's what we need to do brothers man just want to drop a bit of insight on that. Like I said, I'm not hating on these guys. I think that it's, it was a good, it was a good um, podcast. I enjoyed it. I just wanted to chime in on a few things where spiritually, you know, we need we need to make sure we're we're looking at it from a spiritual vantage point. You know, in the, the day it says in the book of Romans, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You know, and also again in the book of Proverbs it says. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. You know, it's deep, man. It's deep. Self-control as a man is our ultimate goal. You know, obviously other than seeking God, but this is this is what comes as a result of seeking God. Like, self-control, discipline is true freedom. You know, I know a quote that says, like, true freedom is found in eternal vigilance. So in other words, like, we always have to have ourselves guarded. Just like Paul says, like, stand firm act like men be strong be watchful you know be mindful be sober and vigilant because your adversary the devil rules around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour you know so for this freedom and this and this freedom in christ we have to maintain our vigilance you know it's absolutely fact man trust me embarking on this journey is a blessing it's going to be tough there's going to be trials and tribulations but it's so worth it man trust me it's so worth it for you for for, for obviously for the most high for your self-respect you know, to, to to attain what you want to what you want to achieve in this life and, and help give you the energy to do so. So, you know, I pray this video bless you, man. I pray you have a, a blessed and beautiful day and, and you found this edifying. Drop a like for me if you watch this video and comment if you watched it this far. Have a blessed day, man. Peace.